supported and continuing through a whole set of actions, whether they were whether they were uh, on the attack or on the defense or a combination, together with the counterattack, you would be able to make the move successfully, mm -hmm. and 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 uh, keep the pressure up on the opponent, mm -hmm. and that's what I was always aiming to do, and uh, so you guys proved that you could do this kind of thing, <laughs> and I guess that's where Johan also got the idea of developing the paradigm yeah. <laughs> of getting the person to fence an entire game on your terms. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you guys talk about that? I know Johan's sort of only crystallized in, only in it. Part, only, only in part, Johan has gone further than I did and, and uh, organized it even more so. Mm -hmm. And so he's gone beyond me on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But I still remember talking about it. Uh, with him in, in, in different uh, uh, different contexts or yeah right in different contexts and um, uh, setting up a, setting up a continuation of, of, of an attack or changing it from an attack to a defense to a counterattack mm -hmm. and uh, but then ending it after after two or three moves only mm -hmm. now Johan is able to Continue to pro continue it with feints, 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 one way or the other, mm -hmm. and enrich the game even more so. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he's he's taken it well beyond what I uh, what I what I was trying to do. Well, I remember you discussing once. Uh, Don't forget, I was working an awful lot of the time with people who didn't have the fencing experience. <laughs> yeah. you know? So you, you can only take them so far. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think you know what I was sort of impressed by, or what I think when I look back on it, was just the environment you created, where you know Gabor Demian was there, Chip Farley was there, Robbie Urson was there, mm -hmm. uh, John Chang was there, and so you were sort of challenging people on a whole bunch of levels, mm -hmm. and uh, you know people could find their own level, but uh, there was always the opportunity to sort of push yourself towards the, towards the higher levels, especially with the it was just sort of an exciting environment. It was quite for gratifying, me. let yeah. me say that. Yeah, well, you know? I can imagine. And, uh, I'm interested in this notion of the paradigm and the notion of getting uh, this issue of commitment, because um, I do remember my fencing being at its best when I was completely aware throughout a series of moves. And often it was the second or third or fourth move that I actually scored on, mm -hmm. but uh, I could always tell when I decided I was done, that I was in trouble. <laughs> and I think that's one of the things I know you, you, you concentrated a lot on, as did, uh, you know, in my lessons, you know, physically with John Chang also. Mm -hmm. um, um, and I also remember you talking about, uh, you know, we were also talking about the difference between American and European fencing. I think you were seeing the trends in European fencing much clearer than we were. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe with your experience of talking to Johan and watching, uh, watching other things, that uh, this extended they, they, tempo is key. They, they, in that, well, it, you know, we were always we were always we were always intimidated by the New York fencers, and you would say, right. "Yeah, the New York fencers, they've got boom boom," but uh, Europe is boom 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 right, boom 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 right, boom boom. Exactly. I remember that's an exact quote from you, and yeah, it suddenly that's came funny. to me what we should be aiming for mm -hmm, in terms mm -hmm. of that extended action. That's absolutely right. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I even saw that happen with uh, Johan's uh, cousin, mm -hmm. uh, who was a very good foil fencer. Right, right. And uh, she came in and she just completely dominated the entire New York crowd with her, with her game of fencing. Yeah. Was this at the, the, uh, at the Martini Rossi's right. down in New York? Yeah, yeah. 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 sure. Yeah. 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 Well, that was a very exciting time. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, so, so this business of changing the tempo and all of a sudden slowing it down, yeah, yeah. and the other person is expecting you to speed it up, <laughs> and then you, you do just the reverse. That really caught a lot of people by yeah. surprise. Right. Uh, well, I remember. Um, um, I guess you know we had we sort of had a, a success in my years, you know, with George mm -hmm. performing so well, Eric Debus. John Rodriguez, uh, myself, um, uh, you know, there's a host of really 
Excellent. Oh, later on, Alan Williams, John Sheffield. Alan, Alan also, Williams, John Sheffield, Chris mm -hmm. Braun. Mm -hmm. Chris um, Braun, right. Uh, you know, a lot of really exciting, exciting Charlie Kwan, uh, all those guys. Very um, true. As the years went on, I mean, you constantly had this issue of developing your own fencers. Right. And you were trying to focus on, you know, what you thought were the key issues to bring people forward. Is there any way you could sort of discuss that? Uh, I don't know if there's a way that you could crystallize that in terms of. Um, well, I did it. I did it as long as I as long as I could. Um, it took a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. And I began recognizing that in uh, oh, about 1987, uh, 1988, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, that's when I started looking for a uh, an assistant coach mm -hmm. who had the kind of energy that I did when I was first hired yeah. by Silvio Vitali, mm -hmm. because that kind of interaction with with, with a with the student especially when they're inexperienced. Mm -hmm. it, it, the coach has to work an awful lot yeah. to hold back at the right time and then all of a sudden to show them what they should be doing. And, uh, and, and, and it's, uh, it's a different kind of coaching from just saying, well, all right, you've got to make this move yeah. just right. You've got to make this move just right. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very different from that. Yeah. And you've got to recognize when it's time to make this move. Right. Right. And that's a uh, so you, you, you know. I remember I I I I I fence guys with my left hand. As well I remember as that. Just to see, just to see. Well, is this guy really observing <laughs> what the opponent's doing? <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, and so uh, you had to keep tabs on them. Are they staying with you? Are the lessons benefiting them? Are they really yeah. learning? Yeah. Well, if they don't observe that you've that you're fencing with a different hand, you know, like, what else are they missing? <laughs> so uh, that was uh, that was one of my that was one of the ways I could tell whether they were doing well or if I could step too close and and I could just hit them with a bent arm if I wanted to and, and they they didn't realize it that they yeah. they'd already lost the tempo. Yeah. You know, they were half a tempo behind the other guy. Well, none of that's going to work if you're half a tempo behind the other guy. Yeah. So, uh, as I say, that, that takes energy, a lot of concentration, and that's why I was so pleased when I finally found Yarrick, yeah. and MIT was willing to let me keep him on uh, for two years as an uh -huh. assistant coach at half, half salary, yeah. and he was willing to do it himself. Yeah. He bought that idea himself, yeah. even though he had been trained completely in Europe. Right. But uh, he, uh, uh, he's now reaping the benefits of, yeah. uh, of that kind of a foundation that I think Johan laid down with us way back then in 1974. Yeah. Because he's continuing to develop these people mm -hmm. very nicely. And you're going to see some nice surprises coming up from uh, <laughs> the way he combines uh, the use of technology yeah. with what he's teaching them. Um, let's go back. Um, let's go back a few years because I, I want to talk about Johann's return. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you'd been in touch with Johann much between his first time here and the second time here. Had you guys communicated much? Yeah, we did. Yeah. We did. Uh, was he talking about fencing? I know he was going through a lot of questions himself about <coughs> what was. his approach should be. And, and he was, but he was he was sticking whatever whatever he was going through. He was still sticking with the fencing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when he said he was coming back, he said he would like to stick with the and, Yeah. You know, that was fine with me. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's fine uh, with me too. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and he said he was only going to be here for a half a year. And I yeah. said, well, for the half a year that you're here, I'd very much like uh, like you to be the leader of the team. Mm -hmm. So why don't we have the captaincy? Split up. You're the leader for the half, first half year, yeah. and somebody else is the leader for the second half year. Yeah. And that's what we did. Yeah. Yeah. And um, uh, his pay game uh, really, uh, really had changed uh, dramatically from the very first time that he mm -hmm. saw him do music. And he was. Uh, he said, "What did he tell me?" He said, uh, "He said, you know, he said." 
uh, the person who can retreat, who can change the